This is the beginning of lesson 2.3, or you could say it as an extension of 2.2. Um, in class, you learned how to calculate GDP using the expenditures approach, and this is just going to be a brief lesson on how to calculate GDP using the income approach. The first thing that you should know is that these two approaches, uh, although it says at the top here they're not exactly equal, roughly the two approaches should arrive at the same uh, calculation of GDP. If you think about it, um, what, what that's saying is that if a dollar is spent in expenditures, so a dollar that is spent, um, say I buy a haircut, that is an expenditure, becomes a dollar earned by somebody else, right? So my hairstylist earns money. I spend it, that's expenditure. Someone earns it, that's income. So every dollar spent equals a dollar earned as income by somebody else. So these two approaches to calculating GDP should really come out to be the same thing. But there are a few discrepancies. So if you look at the expenditures approach, the one that you learned in class, that is the consumption, right, plus investment, plus government purchases, plus net exports, which are exports minus imports. Okay, that is the output or expenditures approach. The income approach, instead, what it does is it adds up all the forms of income that people earn. So we have wages, right, which are, that's most of the income. Wages are the income paid to people who sell their labor. So most people, like myself, or somebody who drives a truck, or somebody who flies an airplane, okay, or somebody who um, is a lawyer, right? Those people, they're selling their labor for the most part. Um, so that's wages plus rents. Okay, rents are when people are earning income off of their property. And it sounds like landlords earn rent, but it's not just landlords, it's anybody um, who owns property and earns an income off it. So if I owned farmland, uh, I might let people rent my farmland to plant crops on it. So that's rents, pretty small portion of income for Americans. Um, interest is the money that people earn off of holdings. So if you have money in a savings account or if you have uh, government bonds or corporate bonds, the interest that is paid on those is also a relatively small portion overall of Americans' income. And then the final category is profits and profits is the income to proprietors. So somebody who is a sole proprietor or somebody who is a partner, say in a law firm, um, part of their income is in the form of profits. And we talk a lot more about that in microeconomics. So wages, rents, plus interest, plus profits, okay, uh, roughly also equals GDP. But there are some statistical adjustments uh, that are the differences between GDP and GNP. I'm sorry, GDP as calculated by the expenditures approach or the income approach, GNP does come up in it. So what are these three statistical adjustments? They are depreciation, indirect business taxes, and net foreign factor income. So the first one, depreciation, um, I like to think of it this way. Depreciation is the loss of value that occurs to capital that you own. So um, if I own a computer, um, it's worth a certain amount. Right, but over time it loses value. What businesses do is they don't want to wait till all their computers have lost all their value uh, and then suddenly have this big bill to pay to replace them. So instead what they do is they set aside what's called a depreciation allowance. Okay, and so that's money that's being essentially set aside as a business expenditure here, okay, during the year, but it's not becoming income to anybody. So that's gonna be a little bit of a discrepancy uh, when it comes to accounting. The second one is indirect business tax or sales tax, and that's pretty simple because when consumers buy something, part of what they pay is taxes. And those taxes, okay, when you pay, spend money on taxes, uh, when you're buying something like gas, right, that money does not become income, right? It does not become income to anyone because it goes to the government instead. So that's gonna be a little bit of a discrepancy. Some of this consumption money we're spending is not becoming income. And then finally, there is the net foreign factor income discrepancy. And that's probably the most important one to understand because when we add up consumption, uh, investment, government spending, and net exports, right, we are adding up our GDP, which is the value of all the goods and services that are being produced within the United States. But when we add up wages, rents, interest, and profits, what we are adding up is all the income earned by Americans. And that's not exactly the same thing. Okay, this is actually national income calculation here. It's not really GDP. So what's the difference between national income and GDP? Well, some of the income that Americans earn is coming from somewhere else, right? Some Americans are earning income from, say, a hotel that they own in South America. So some Americans are earning income from interests abroad, 
while some of the money that's being spent here um, that's going to companies here in the United States actually becomes income to foreign owners. So we have to make that adjustment as well. And we have to, from this approach, we have to add in money that is being earned by people in other countries here, and we have to take out the money that Americans earn elsewhere. So those are really the three discrepancies. And if we look at this next slide, which you've seen before, you can kind of see where they come out of this circular flow. So depreciation, for example, is money that is being spent, but the firm is keeping the money to itself. Okay, and the net foreign factor income is income that is leaving the United States, right? It is not, it is not necessarily staying here and becoming income to Americans. And then, of course, the sales tax is the money that is going straight to the government. Okay, one last thing, and I'm hoping the bell won't ring on me here, but I'll pause if it does, so you, hopefully you won't have to hear it, um, is that this actually helps us explain the difference between GDP and GNP. And GDP is what we are studying, gross domestic product. GNP is gross national product, and this is really um, a calculation of what is everything that is being made by Americans or American firms in a year, which is different than what is being made by or within the United States. So GDP, um, and GNP both include any goods and services that are being produced within the United States by American-owned firms. But GDP also includes any goods and services, that's my abbreviation, any goods and services produced in the U.S. by foreign-owned owned firms. So, for example, a Honda that is produced in Ohio, okay, or a Toyota, but I'll put Honda being produced in Ohio, is going to count to GDP but it's not going to count in GNP. And the other side of that is that American-owned firms are producing things in other countries. So for example, a Ford, let's say that they produce Fords in Mexico. Sorry about that brief delay, didn't want to have to force you to hear the whole bell. A Ford that is produced in Mexico is going to count toward our GNP because it is being produced by an American firm but it's not going to count toward our GDP because it's not actually being produced in the United States. So that's a brief introduction to some of the alternative ways of looking at national income accounting. In class, you're going to look at some other calculations like per capita GDP and real GDP. But it is very important to understand this difference between GDP and GNP.